Let's check this out. We're getting ready to head on a trip to Wisconsin. I wanted to test this, disconnect from shore power and plug in the vehicle to see how many amps the Honda Pilot will put into these batteries while we're driving down the road. I'm disconnected from shore power and I'm getting about a half an amp from solar. It's very cloudy at the moment towards the afternoon, so that's about to be expected. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug the car in. And let's see what this does to it. So we're getting basically two amps at the moment. Roughly, a little under two amps from the car. So 24 watts about. So that hopefully gives you some kind of frame of reference to work with if you're planning all this stuff out. We just got here at Madison, Wisconsin at a Walmart. And I wanna just see, because if you watched that last trip, we went to Rock Creek there over by Kellogg. And we basically had only like 70% of the battery. And I don't know where it went. And I want to see what it says we have for battery. It didn't really gain any charge. We were 13.77. We didn't lose any charge. We didn't gain any charge. Most of this driving was all night, so there's nothing from the solar. We're going to get ready for the evening and uh, head out again tomorrow morning. Foggy woggy doodle all the day. Right, so this is a this is a Walmart. Is this a Walmart? Yes, Dad. Oh, you can see it. It's. I feel like we're in a giant building. been foggy. We've been driving through fog for the last hour and a half. I'm not making that up. That's It's just been like this the whole drive. Very stressful when you can't see. <laughs> One thing I didn't think of is maybe the fact that it didn't get past the 13 volts is maybe that's all my alternators put around is around 13.8 volts. So it couldn't charge it higher than that, obviously. But that meant it kept it from going down. So now that the battery is depleted a little bit because we used it last night, we'll see where the voltage is. And then we're going to see if maybe when it's lower, because we used it last night, if it will put a little more amperage in. And we'll see now from this point, when you have lower voltage than as much as you get charged off something that's designed for lead acid, if the car will actually benefit charging that battery. We'll see how that does. It's pretty clouded over right now. We're really not getting anything from solar. That 0.4 amps, remember we're using about 0.3 amps on the battery meter and we're using about 0.3 amps or so on the radio that you can't turn off completely. So right now we are using a half of an amp. We're down to 86%, 13.27 volts. Let's go ahead and start the car and see if it puts in more amperage when it can actually have room to charge. So as you can see, it is getting almost four amps. So yeah, as the battery is lower, it will put more amperage in from the car. If I do the battery disconnect, will it still charge from the car? Yeah. Nope, it does not. So you have to have the battery connected, obviously. So, <laughs> but I just wanted to be sure. All right, here we are. We thought we'd stop by here. Kristen is a fan of the Packers. So here we are at Lambeau Field. Are you happy? Hey, yep. Joshua. Super happy. throwing the fuzzy pig skin to the dog. <laughs> you wanna go get it? Ready? Come on. Go get it! Yeah, Brandon! Come on! Nala, come on! Come on! Come on! Come on, bring it! Nala, come on! Nala, come on!
<laughs> Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. <laughs> Can you drop it? Drop it. So Jay, where are we heading to right now? The pro shop. The pro shop? Lambo Field. Lego Lambo Legos. <laughs> Jay's checking out hats again. Oh no, Christian is. Christian's Ooh. checking out hats again. Which one should I get for the camper, Jay? Our collection. All right, so here we are, and we managed to charge it up to 94%. So that's encouraging. So for what it's worth, these are just my observations, and I'm putting all these numbers together as we go forward from different trips, and I'm journaling all this so that anybody curious about these Battleborn batteries would, like the Geo Pro, might have a frame of reference. So when we were at Rock Creek two weekends ago. I just experimented, ran all the power I really wanted to run, and we only used about 20% of battery each night. If we gain 10% back charge just from the car driving three hours, that means every night that we're on the road, if we were to drive six to eight hours a day and then stop somewhere overnight and use power however we want, and say the next day we're driving six to eight hours, the car is gonna get those batteries topped back off, in theory. Again, all these numbers are just rough guesses from what I'm observing, but we used about 20% a night running the batteries and everything, lights and TV and internet and all that, fans, even ran the inverter for a while, and we were only using about 20% a night. A six hour day of driving should replenish your battery from a night where you've used 20% of your battery. So I've got about uh, 40 minutes into this so far. I've got the trailer backed in, I've got everything leveled, we've got all our chairs out, I've got the grill up, I was working on putting my ham antenna up. So that's where we're at. But as you can see, there's not going to be a lot of light here. So we're not going to get a lot of solar. So I've got the generator, everything is all hooked up, everything's ready to go. Of course we have that Easy Start 365, but I've got videos about that, just look it up on my channel, Easy Start 365. Uh, we're using the Westinghouse uh, 2200 generator. Continuous 1800 watts, it powers the AC and everything just fine. But that's gonna end up charging the batteries a little bit as well. But it's really humid right now, it's not hot, but it's really humid. So we'll just verify the power right now and the time, and we'll see how much we end up after running the generator for a couple hours, getting comfortable, getting the humidity out of the camper, all that. We are currently at 94%, 13.28 volts. We are currently drawing with everything on the camper right now, lights and stuff like that, about 25 watts. As you can see with what we're drawing right now and what our battery banks can hold, we've got about three days, almost four days left. So we don't really need power, except for the fact it's really, really humid right now and you know, you're moving around and everything. So why not be comfortable? So I'm gonna just start up the generator. I'm not even hooking up this external tank. I am able to run this tank as a continuous feed into the generator. This is three gallons. So if your generator was topped off at, I think, a gallon and a half, I could have four and a half gallons worth of run time. So here you go.
go. This is a perfect example. Notice we are still with the generator connected, sucking almost an amp. And the reason for that is really quite simple. The converter that's in the camper only charges up to around 13.2 volts. So when it gets to 13.2 volts, the converter is not really doing a whole lot. And what will happen is, as soon as you plug into Shoreline, the converter isn't running your lights inside. If you, un if you disconnect your battery, then the converter's running your lights. But right now, even though the converter is on, it's not providing any of that power for the lights. It's coming from your batteries. That's why you still see a one amp draw from my batteries right now, even though I have the generator running because the AC and all that's inside is running, but it's of course running off generator power and the converter is literally doing nothing at this point. The converter will start pitching in some charge to the battery when it gets below 13.2 volts. But right now it's really not helping. The generator at this point, because the batteries are as charged as they are going to get with the converter and the, the car and stuff like that, and there's no sun coming from my solar, and again, my charge controller from my solar does support LiPo because it's been upgraded. But everything else in the camper is only designed for lead acid. So they don't charge to 14.2 volts. And the car isn't gonna charge to 14.2 volts. So basically, as far as everything else is concerned, it's charged. The solution to this would be to add a lithium battery charger. Victron makes one for about 150 bucks. It's 15 amp. You would just run that off one of the AC jacks in the camper to your positive and negative on your battery bank, and then that would make sure it's getting topped off to the 14.2 volts. So your AC from your camper that's coming from your generator would then be going into the battery and helping charge, and also offset the fact that we are drawing current from the battery right now because the converter's not doing anything. All right, AC just kicked on again, so right as I'm ready to talk, but, uh, taking advantage, charging all my devices while the generator's running rather than having to charge them or run them off battery power. So that's just, hey. Bunny here. How are you doing? All right. Should we go inspect your site, Jay? Yeah, you Let's go one. inspect your site. Your site. I can't, even, I can't even speak. <laughs> this is Jay's campsite. We got some tent campers here. They look like they know what they're doing. Well, they had a lot of guidance. They had a lot of guidance. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? We would have gotten it eventually. Yeah, go up there. Eventually. Yeah. yeah. It's taken maybe five minutes longer because <laughs> I was almost there and he was like, this house is done. And I was almost there. <laughs> almost had it. Almost had it. And of course, Jay goes all out. He brings a canopy and everything. Are we going to watch a movie this time, Jay? Maybe. Ah. Maybe? Maybe. Do you know how our time schedule goes? Yeah. So I do have my ham antenna up and ready. It's running all the way over there if you can see it. All right, so we just learned something. So Wisconsin State Parks do not allow generators. So that's fine, we've got enough power, but keep that in mind. However, having solar still would not help in this situation. I want you to look at this location. There is so much trees here, very little light would ever make it to your solar panels. There's no amount of solar, within reason anyway, that would really help in this situation. So, what are your options? Well, fortunately, we do have two kilowatts of power, but what we're gonna make complete use of now is that battery monitor to make sure that what we're using is going to last us for four days. All right, so if we run one light outside continually, and we run one light inside continually, and leave everything on as it is, those little things up there which really we can't turn off, we do have three days worth of power. And again, we're not gonna be running the lights continually, so we should be pretty good. There is one other thing you can do, which is technically not running a generator, is discreetly back your vehicle up, connect the trailer to your vehicle, start your engine, and let it run. <laughs> that will give you power. So, as an emergency, if you need to, you could do that discreetly. 
you're not running a generator. <laughs> but seriously, I would only do that if you had absolutely no other option. We are going to basically be completely on battery power. There's no way you'd really get enough light through these trees to make any difference, even if you had solar panels. So this is going to be a really good test to see how things go.